In a few different ways, Live Alive is a difficult game for me to talk about why exactly I think more people should play and experience it, because I really do believe that a large part of what makes this game a great experience is going in with as few preconceptions and expectations as possible. There is so much this game does where on the cover you might expect it to just be another traditional SNES era JRPG when it is really anything but that. Now, with that in mind, kind of hard to review a game without actually talking about why I love it. So there's gonna be some stuff that I'm gonna dive a little more in on, but other things that I wanna keep a mystery for you guys. Now, if you're wondering what even is Live Alive, it just looks like another Octopath Traveler to you. It's really not. I understand why that comparison is happening a lot because, you know, Octopath Traveler was the first HD 2D game. It really popularized the style, which is the same visual style that this remake is making use of. And, you know, when you talk about the kind of short version of the concept where Octopath Traveler is about eight travelers and Live Alive is about eight characters that you play different chapters as, kind of sounds like a very similar pitch, but there's some very important differences in this setup. Namely the fact that while Octopath Traveler is a fairly traditional structured RPG where you have these different protagonists and have them work together across their journeys, Live Alive instead highlights all of its characters individually. You have your choice of seven different chapters at the start with an eighth chapter you unlock after that. And each chapter is its own isolated story and really its own isolated game in some ways. Every character's chapter is its own very gimmicky experience. Some of them do walk the line of being a little closer to a traditional JRPG. Others are more experimental and mess with being an entirely different kind of game. Some chapters are focused much more on dialogue with combat playing a minimal role, and one chapter in particular is literally just fights with only a couple cutscenes, and it's presented like a 90s era fighting game. They all have their own little quirks and interesting decisions, which is part of the reason why it is kind of difficult to really pitch and sell to someone what makes this game special. Because depending on what it is that interests you in games, whether that's the combat systems or the narratives or you know special gimmicky things like you see in this game, different chapters are going to land differently for you. I can't tell you the number of people I've talked to who played the demo for the game and really did not like the far future chapter that was presented in it, but immediately fell in love when they tried the China and Japan chapters and vice versa. I've also known a few people who found those chapters to be fine, but really thought the far future one was something interestingly different from what they were expecting. And that's part of the point of this game. It's not just one simple standardized experience throughout its entire playtime. It's kind of this weird mix of multiple different styles of gameplay and different approaches to storytelling that all comes together to give you this different servings of concepts that, especially for when it was released, is really compelling. While I don't want to go in depth on every single chapter that the game has available, the one that I do want to talk a little bit about is the Edo chapter, because it is by far the most ambitious one, and I think the one that really best highlights just how kind of weird this game was for its time. Well, a lot of the core aspects of this chapter are handled a lot like a traditional RPG where, you know, you can level your character up through battles, there are items you can find and equip to make you more powerful. The actual overall structure of the chapter is something completely different. Uh, it's basically a non-linear mission where you're told what you need to accomplish at the start of the chapter, you're dropped in the level, which is this castle you need to infiltrate, and the rest is up to you. You can try to stealthily avoid your enemies through the whole chapter and do your best to not kill any humans. You could do the opposite and just murder your way through every single hallway, or more likely a most people's first play is going to be some kind of mix in between where you spare who you can, but there's gonna be some fights you just can't avoid because you're not sure what to do yet. The number of different path solutions and little hidden things you can find in this chapter are honestly astounding. I mean, I've had a great time with all the different chapters in this game, but this one in particular, in my mind, is the only one that is truly replayable, where you can play it time and time again and really have very different experiences. Now, again, this non-linear style design is something that is unique to this chapter, but that is also one of the things that is really cool about this game, is that every chapter has something that's interestingly unique about it, where you might get used to the experience of one chapter and then find yourself thrown into something completely different with the next one you try out. I think one of the things that really impresses me the most about this remake is how actually faithful it is to the original game. Obviously, Obviously, there are some differences between what fan translators came up with for dialogue back in the day versus how it's being translated with its official one. But in terms of the game's balance, the scenes, it is a very faithful one-to-one -one remake with a few quality of life changes that have just updated the gameplay a little bit to make it more serviceable. In particular, a mini-map that really helps with giving you a better sense of direction for some of the more aimless chapters that you can play through. And it's with this faithfulness in mind that another thing that really surprised me is how well this whole thing has aged. I mean, look, when I was a lot 
lot younger, I played the fan translation of Live Alive and absolutely fell in love with it. It was this weird little unique game that none of my other friends had really played or knew about, and I would just gush to them, you really need to check this out and try it. And, you know, going into this remake, there was absolutely a part of me that was like, you know, how much of that is nostalgia? I really haven't played this game in a long time. I remember a lot of it, but maybe playing it with fresh eyes now isn't gonna really hit the same. And really the experience was far from it. If anything, I've walked away playing this remake, appreciating this game even more than I did back when I played it in my teens. It's one of those titles where I think something that it really proves is how much more memorable an imperfect game can be. There are a lot of games that do certain individual things better than this one does. Combat balance, exploration mechanics, for its time visually I would say it looked all right, whereas this remake does look a lot better, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but there's so much about this game where, yeah, you could nitpick and pull apart individual things that don't feel that strong uniquely, but because the general pitch of this game is something so different from anything else out there, and because it's not afraid to just kind of have fun with itself, you just can't help but walk away with this feeling of having played and absorbed something that isn't like anything else out there. Which is all the more astounding based on the fact that, again, this is an almost 30 year old game that we just didn't get out here for the longest time. And to this day, nothing is really quite done the exact same thing that I think this one accomplishes so well. Now with this concept of memorable imperfection aside, there are some things about the game that I think were great for its time and have also aged incredibly well now. And there are some things that are still generally a problem. As far as good things go, the music, absolutely incredible. The entire game soundtrack was composed by Yoko Shimomura, who back in 1994 had a pretty good list of works kind of in development back at the time, but today really is established as one of the best composers in video games. And this game is a wonderful highlight of that fact. It sounded great on the original system, but the redone score for this remake is absolutely beautiful. And one of my favorite things about this game is that as you play through all the chapters and hear more and more of the music, there's actually a jukebox you can go into the settings to just listen to whatever track you want. And I've been making extensive use of that while writing my thoughts down about this game. Now, visually, the original release, I thought, looked good. There were a lot of other contemporary SNES RPGs that looked better, in my opinion. But the remake work that went into this one, turning it into an HD 2D game, is simply amazing. This is something I touched on a little bit with Triangle Strategy, where, you know, I liked Octopath a lot. I think it was a really good showcase of what HD 2D can be. But with each new game, we're seeing a little more refinement to the style. You know, Triangle Strategy toned down certain aspects of it, and Live Alive has continued to do that while also experimenting a little bit more with it. There are a lot of individual scenes, especially some of the opening shots for chapters that just looks absolutely beautiful, uh, and a few kind of experimental moments that add just a little bit of extra cinematic energy while maintaining this very interesting retro modern mix and style. While I've liked the look of every HD 2D game so far, Live Alive to me really stands as the best execution of it to date. And while I think that it could still get even better, this is really one of the best showcases of how this art style can look in a game, especially when translating older retro titles. Now, I know I've been gushing nonstop about all the stuff I love about this game, but there is some stuff that it does maybe not as well as others, including some things that were, you know, problems back in the original release and have been maintained with this remake. The combat system in this game is actually really interesting and I do have a lot of fun with it, but if your interest in RPGs is primarily for interesting, challenging combat, Live Alive is really not gonna deliver on that front for you. Overall, the game's battle difficulty is definitely on the easier side. There are some occasional little odd spikes here and there where there are some boss fights that are surprisingly more difficult than everything that came before them. And there can be some situations where depending on how you play a chapter, you might be at a little more disadvantage than you could have been. For instance, uh, with the Japan chapter again, because of how non-linear it is, it's possible that maybe you find yourself getting stuck in a fight that you are very underleveled for. But these situations are definitely more the exception and if you focus on everything from a more traditional kind of grinding level standpoint, you're very rarely going to run into fights that really feel like a proper challenge. Also, while I don't really want to actually go in depth on how the game's kind of late stage end game stuff works, I will say that in my opinion, it's one of the weaker parts of the game. The individual chapters that you play up front are amazing uh, and the kind of back end is just a little weaker. It still has some really cool shining points, and especially from a narrative standpoint, I think it wraps up a couple of really cool ideas that absolutely make it worth playing through. Uh, but I do feel like the kind of final 
three or four hours of the game out of the 23 hours that it takes to play it just feel a little more like a slog compared to the rest. One other really minor, minor complaint that I have, and this is kind of more of a nitpicky missed opportunity kind of thing in my mind, is I really love a lot of the concept art that has been circulating as part of the kind of advertising push for this game. They've used it in the trailers, it's been used in social posts, it's used on the cover art for the physical copy of the game. It looks absolutely wonderful, and none of it is used in game. Just knowing that I really like the style of the stuff that I'm seeing, it would have been really neat to see some of these get made use of as character portraits and dialogue or showing up on the character status or equipment screen. Uh, it just really feels like a missed opportunity because the art looks great uh, and it's a shame that it doesn't make its way into the actual game itself. Ultimately, I think the biggest thing to really emphasize about Live Alive is that it really is such an interestingly unique experience. And while I've been spending this time talking about why it feels special to me, it's ultimately something that I think has to be experienced up front to really understand first, which is also one of the kind of rough things about recommending it. Uh, look, it is an absolutely odd little gem of an RPG, and I would not be surprised for a few people to try it out, start it up, put a decent amount of time into it and go, I don't get it, it's not for me. And that's fine, but there's so much character and heart to this title that I think there's a lot of people out there who, you know, just based on trailers and stuff alone, might not necessarily give it a second glance and find themselves to be very pleasantly surprised by what it has to offer. Now, luckily, Square Enix has been on a really big tear of having a lot of their games offer playable demos, Live Live included, and I heavily advise checking it out. If there's any part of you that is remotely interested in this game and you haven't checked out the demo yet, do it. Because because while it doesn't give you the full breadth of what all the game's different chapters have to offer, it does allow you to play the opening parts of three of them, two in particular I think have stronger starts than the other one, uh, that just gives you a little bit better idea of what it's like to play this game. And even then, I honestly don't think the demo paints the full picture of what the full title can bring you, but at least gives you enough of a taste that you might be able to decide right away if it's something you want to throw money down on to experience the rest of. In my mind, it's absolutely completely worth it. And if I'm being honest, as of right now at least, it's my game of the year 2022. There's lots of other cool stuff that has come out. Obviously, Elden Ring is a huge deal, but for the kind of personal impact that the original release of this game had for me and seeing how well this remake has been handled, uh, it's just something truly special to me that, you know, there's other stuff coming out this year that might dethrone it, but it's gonna be a tough fight to win. So those are my thoughts on Live Alive. It's honestly really difficult for me to perfectly put into words how much this title means to me uh, and how I think it really does stand apart from everything else out there. Again, if you're at all considering checking it out, or even if you're kind of just not sure about it, check out the demo, give it a shot, and I promise you it's going to have things to offer you that you never would have expected. If you enjoyed the video and haven't subscribed yet, maybe think about doing that. Uh, honestly, game reviews are not a thing that I've done very often, and I'm leaning more and more into this year, especially for RPGs, my personal favorite of genres. And while they haven't exactly been my most viewed videos, I've been really enjoying the kind of positive reaction that I've seen from those of you who have been watching and enjoying these. So thank you very much for that. Other than that, if you're interested in grabbing a physical copy of the game, I do have a link posted down below in the description, and I will see you guys later.